So die forum, die doel van die forum is, dit is een leesing reeks wat die universiteitse navorsers gestudeerd het gee om dit te hef, om die toegankelijke wijze met die oorlaar student en ook die algemene publiek te deel. Ek is blij om jy te sien, I'm very glad to see all of you, we are a small but select audience, we are an enthusiastic audience. Uh, I want to, uh, this is also part of our Stellenbosch 100 uh, lecture series, so as you know we're uh, celebrating or commemorating our uh, centenary this year, so it will also form part of that. A special word of welcome to our speaker, uh, Professor Sheik uh, Kombison Penyan, who holds the research chair in food, environments, nutrition and health in our faculty of medicine and health sciences at time of today. So, uh, as, uh, and I do want to say, uh, she, she came all the way from Tigerberg, uh, she has an oral exam on for, uh, that she had to uh, take into account for some of the dietetic students, and Professor Tuli Madonsela is also a, a guest lecturer on campus there, so we're very pleased that she, uh, uh, that, she, that she's speaking to us today. So her topic is going to be why food environments matter for nutrition and health. So, um, as you may perhaps know or not know, um, I am a gastroenterologist, so, um, so food and everything around it is really a hot topic and of interest to me, and I hardly ever uh, uh, have, have a, a meeting like this or where I have a chance to say something, and if you're older than the age of 50, you need a colonoscopy. So, uh, so but why is, 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 is this topic also very important? is that this morning we launched the new Center for Food Safety at Stellenbosch University. So this Center for Food Safety and it's in our Department of uh, Food Sciences within the Faculty of Agri-Sciences. And that um, it, it uh, originated uh, following the, uh, on the mysteriosis uh, outbreak earlier this year. Um, and it's an initiative from uh, it's, uh, the acting director is Professor Peter Koos. And Tiger Brands is the industry sponsor. Um, they um, donated um, a 10 million rand for to establish this center for food safety. There's significant um, international uh, links as well. So, um, as the World Health Organization says, access to sufficient amounts of safe and nutritious food is key to sustaining life and promoting good health. And um, food safety as the topic that Professor Mubignani is going to address, um, these are complex topics, multidimensional challenges, and I think she is uh, really eminently suited to, to, um, to address that. Um, her interests, food, environments, nutrition and health in the context of their influence on the triple burden of malnutrition, undernutrition, overnutrition and consequent non-communicable diseases and that's the focus of her research and she will provide some context and outline areas of debate as to how the, the, with regard to the evidence that still link these uh, these uh, interesting aspects of of the coexistence of the triple burden of diseases can manifest in the same household and how nutrition and health outcomes uh, impact on that so She's the research chair in food environments, nutrition and health in our division of human nutrition. She holds a master's degree in nutrition and dietetics from the University of Illinois in Chicago. We recently visited the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign um, when we looked at a data science uh, initiative, certainly very impressive campuses. And she also has a PhD in nutrition from Northwest University. A C3 NRF rated researcher, she supervised 20 masters and doctoral students. Uh, she's published in numerous, uh, she has uh, in accredited journals, has presented or contributed to more than 80 papers at national and international conferences. Ms. Mabignani is a registered dietitian with the Health Professionals Councils of South Africa and she is also a chairperson and member of the Professional Board of Dietetics of the HBCSA. So, very much looking forward to your talk. Welcome, Mr. Thank you. Um, sometimes one forgets who you are, and it's <laughs> the way you get introduced that um, 
you remember who you are. Actually, the last part of being the chair, I was former chair, like former president. <laughs> <laughs> the former chair. It's an honor for me to have been invited to address you in this forum. As you indicated, there were many other competing um, events today, including the event that he alluded to in, in food science. My dean was the assistant that I was a I'm there already for <laughs> another event, and I'm not sure how they are doing. I wasn't sure how they were going to overlap because he was concerned that he's not able to be at the food and sciences event because of what we have on the other side. I've always wanted to come to the forum because there are always interesting speakers and topics. <coughs> but because of the amount of sitting on traffic that one has to enjoy to come here, I always miss them. And, and I always thought as I was preparing this that I should have been at least to one or two so that I could have prepared myself. Um, I'm going first to take you through what my research chair is about. I must indicate that this chair is um, an infant. It's only from now, July 2018, and it's going to go to June 2023 or 2028 if it's renewed. So we're still only starting uh, this work, although I've been working in, in the same area. Uh, then I'll talk about what we mean by the food environment, or what constitutes the food environment, and why it matters, and then indicate some of the envisaged uh, knowledge that we uh, expect to generate from uh, the research, and then we allow for questions and answers. I must indicate that my entourage uh, consists of Shioban, who is sitting over there. Um, she's a postdoc that I share with uh, UCT and the University of Oslo. She's just started, so she's going to be, she's now in the University of Oslo, she's just here for a week to get a feel of steroid so that she can come back. But she's working in the, uh, her postdoc is in the area of the food environment and children and the factors that influence um, children's food choices. And I also have uh, Oluchi sitting out there, because she's trying to finish her dissertation for some reason today. She's a doctoral student who has finished her dissertation this year. Um, so I will also um, ask them to come in during the Q&A because they also work in the environment. So as I said, the, the research chair um, has only um, taken off, but the research that we and research to be involved in. Um, it's about the cognitions and the processes and behaviors of, of human beings. Um, we're looking at what influences us to make the choices um, that we make uh, before consuming food. But it also uh, includes um, the social and economic uh, and, and preferences as well as cultural and meanings that we hold in, in societies because this influences the choices that we make. And the choices is not only about the choice to eat, it's, it's, um, you will see as I go along, it's the choice um, on where you buy food, um, which foods you buy, how to prepare, who you eat with, how you eat, and, and so forth. Um, and also, the the meaning and the value you attach to food, it influences how uh, we view food. So this research is, um, is, is what we, we, we want uh, to, to, to undertake because um, there are, I will show at the end some of the reviews that I have done that have shown that the link between the food environment and the municipality Festation of the triple burden of diseases. <coughs> These are some of the topics that the chair will be looking at. Um, factors that influence food choice and distribution within the households. We'll also look at the food systems, what kind of food systems exist 
in various uh, urban environments, even um, within um, the, the, the Western Cape or the areas, what kind of food systems exist in, in, in townships, in the uh, urban areas and so forth. And you'll have noticed that in terms of the types of shops, you'll find um, a, a food chain like your, your shop right checkers have got different uh, forms of, of shops in different areas and that influences the type of uh, the quality and the quantity of foods that are available for, for people and hence influences uh, food choice as well as nutrition. We'll look at climate change and how it affects nutrition and also the climate change and other household de uh, determinants in, in terms of how they um, influence the, um, the occurrence and also how they can intersect and how we can come up with interventions to prevent or, or to delay the onset of the triple burden of diseases. Uh, we we'll also look at other issues around differential decision making, gender issues, um, who decide on who is what, who decide on what children is, and, and often it has been reported, and we have reported, we have seen in most studies that in the same household where you have um, different prevalences of disease like overweight and underweight in the same household. We want to understand what happens with the decision making, who decides on the quality of food that is eaten by some household members and not the others. And of course we would like to um, design some potential and intervention and, and test them in terms of food choice, food environment and, and the um, diseases. So what is the food environment? Uh, there are various, uh, I don't call them definitions, there are more descriptions. And, and the food environment, as I indicated, it could be about the presence of food um, that affects the, the person's diet. The food environment could also be your proximity to the food store location. Always when I go to the, the, the student center, it's, it's a food environment. Or, uh, whatever it's called, it's, it's all kinds of food they are located in one place and, and that influences access and availability. Uh, food environment could also be about, I indicated in the shop right example, it could be the distribution of the food stores, the type of food services that is um, uh, offered and also um, a, a food system around how people access food. The food environment is also known, there are different names that I use sometimes, community food environment, nutritional food environment, or local food environment. But what is important is to note that there is the food environment and community learning, which is about the presence and locations of food and so forth. And then there's the food environment, which is more personal and individual, which is about the, us as consumers and, and the food choices that we make and the food choices that we make and the types of food, the markets and shops where we choose to go and buy food. So the community food environment um, has to do with when we define food security, we always talk about availability, accessibility, uh, utilization, and sustainability. So the community aspect has to do with availability, the prices, the prices is the anything, especially I usually worry when, when there are uh, rises in petrol prices, I worry about the food, <laughs> because it, there's a trickle down effect on, on the food. Um, the personal food environment has to do with access, how much money I have or how much money the family has to buy food or what proportion of the income is used to purchase food, what I can afford, but it's also about food choice, the desirability and the cultural uh, preferences. But the two uh, food environments are interrelated.
because they still have to do with us. It's, it's you who live in the community, but it's you who make the choices. So the, there is an interrelatedness around the, the food environment. So you can see the food environment, it, 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 it's big and it has been conceptualized such that the, we, we have uh, issues around the distribution of food uh, sources, but we also have um, an understanding of the consumer and how we encounter first where we buy food, but also how we encounter um, the type of food that is available for us. The, there's a big working group that has been uh, constituted by the F FAO, um, which is called the, the Food Environment Working Group. So it's a big WHO, FAO um, focus area. And, and it is because, I think I'll count there uh, later on, because of the um, global nature of food distribution and, and so forth. So they are looking at how to advise and, and to guide research and countries in terms of how to come up with legislation around um, the food environment. So the working group is also looking at, um, at defining the food environment so that we have a global um, a definition. And some, these are some of the variables that they are also looking at, some of them are already allocated to them. So the, <laughs> this will not be complete without showing you some of the environments that, that we encounter. Um, Two weeks ago, I was listening to SAFM and as part of the sugar tax that we are all aware of, um, they said, I haven't seen it for sure because I've been driven everywhere. As, as part of clearing the sugar containing food from near the schools, they, they have now banned the Coca-Cola uh, address near the schools, but we are yet to really uh, experience it because it's also about the food environment. So these are, uh, so when we talk about the food environment, we also, um, not talking only about the food as I was talking about, we're also talking about the, the, the advertising, the, there's that new one of KFC uh, getting us to go and buy, is it six pieces for 60 rands on Tuesdays? <laughs> Um, they, they, it's about the food environment. So you've got these competing um, uh, factors that influence the, the food environment. So the products that surround us um, during um, our daily lives. And the food environment also has a lot to do with the production. I mean, with the land debate that is going on, one of the things that is um, for all of us as we talk about food security is the fact that the, whatever happens should not influence the production because we do need uh, sufficient food, especially of these greens, <laughs> which usually is the least that we include in our diet. And as I indicated that the, the food environment has shifted to become a uh, very global. Um, because of the fast food environment and the businesses, but also because of the, the export, import, um, trade deals that many countries have. Um, so we have to look uh, at the food environment, and uh, at the food environment with a global lens. Uh, So this is more pictures around the environment. So it's choosing, it is who you eat with, um, what kind of stores we, we, we go to. So it's about who, when, where and where and how we acquire um, the food. Now why does all this um, matter? 
for that, and I'm going to focus on South Africa. The children in South Africa suffer from undernutrition, as the prof has indicated. Uh, those that are stunted or short for age are up to a third, a third percent, the children. We have many households, about the third, that are at risk of hunger in one in four children if they go to bed hungry. And the result of poor growth, we know that it, um, they, they, they don't develop well uh, intellectually, and, and that leads to them not participating as free citizens later in life. But we also know that underdeveloped children um, develop into adults and are at higher risk of overweight, of obesity, and non communicable diseases later in life. And this um, has been reported widely. So, um, undernutrition is, is not good because poor growth, but later in life, as they grow um, older, they become uh, at risk of the non communicable diseases. As adults, most of us are either overweight or obese, and we suffer from one, two, or three non communicable diseases. Um, we know some of them, and some of us also have got, because of poor consumption of fruits and vegetables, we've got micronutrient deficiencies. Um, so these are the issues, and all of them interact with the food environment in one way or the other. Now, this is, this is what South Africans die from. I, I didn't get the latest uh, 2017, but you can see there. And diabetes, uh, CVDs, and hypertension. They just change places. And you can take the 2014 one, you still have the same. And, and some of these are, are, are modifiable because there is factors also into diet. And, and it's not just diet. I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about the food environment, um, including physical activity and other risk factors. Now, if you, um, this study looked at um, the global need for certain food groups and food items, and the global availability. And as you can see here, the, the red meat we only need 36 million tons, and we have 202, up to almost 600. We need nuts and seeds, and look what we have. Um, this is what we need, this is what uh, we have, or oh, not even consuming. This isn't about availability, it's not even about consumption. And we know that in terms of whether it's control or prevention of non communicable diseases, we need the phytochemicals that are contained in the nuts and seeds and the fruits and, and vegetables. Now fish, if you look at the next one, we um, fish is, um, um, I think it's here. This is fish. Now we have just enough fish. This is what we eat. We all know that we must eat fish once or twice a week. I don't know how many of us are doing that. Now, milk, we need so much milk because of the children as well, but we have much less than we are supposed to be eating. Uh, um, and, the, and, the, and, the, and those foods that are the dogs, the meat, and the, um, this is red meat, and the world with the statues, the statues um, that is starch, the potato chips, and the bread, and the rice, and the bar. <laughs> we have more than we need. So it's, it's obvious that those foods that we have more than we need, actually the meat, the meat that we require 
in a week if it's about this much. And you know that other question that I, I showed you that you get from our spare or your grills is just one week. But the week we did so much good. So, but this shows the global food environment in terms of the foods that are available is not according to the health needs and according to the disease um, profiles that we have. Now, the having said this, I'm, I'm very brief, it's, it's obvious that the kind of research that we envisage to do bring um, several disciplines, um, it's a multi um, disciplinary in nature. We have, as human nutritionists, we have to work with agriculturalists, not only as health uh, as nutritionists, but as health professionals, to work with agriculturalists, economists, um, and other, uh, because the issues on food environment is about the socio-ecological perspective and understanding uh, human behavior around food. But we also have to deal with the economic and social um, developmental issues that interact with us as human beings as, as we move along and, and also encounter technology. So this is the review that I was talking about, which um, they reviewed 38 studies and, and showed that the food <laughs> environment um, is linked to um, food and um, to dietary um, outcomes. And the focus, there was a lot of focus on fruits and vegetables, but other dietary outcomes also showed meaningful associations. Um, again, supporting that the food environment in totality, depending on what um, one is looking at at the time. Um, in this very review, they, they found that the, the food outlets consumption uh, showed the weakest link, but they said it's because the, the food outlets are very, are very variable. And some of them, especially now, um, with many of these outlets responding to the sugar tax, the salt uh, legislation, and other legislation around the, the fat content, and so forth, they try to do something to their recipes and food products. And then us as consumers, our own, and then we, we get attracted to them in one way or the other. So I'm going to embark on uh, research on food environments in terms of what I looked at. And one of the things that Chopin, when she starts with her, um, she's, we're going to do a review of studies that have um, were done in primary schools and, and for teenagers and, and primary school children. And, and, and try to isolate the food environmental factors that influence the food choice or food availability around children. So, with the research, with the definitions that I've given, with the research that I research to do on food environment, food security, and, and health, um, we envisage that we generate knowledge around food and nutrition security, probably ensuring that those children and households who go to bed hungry, that we, we contribute to the 2030 um, and targets of, um, uh, I think the targets, in my opinion, are very ambitious because it says no hunger in 2030. <laughs> But we hope that we'll be able to contribute in five percent or so. We hope that more of us will be eating more leaves <laughs> um, to make sure that we get fed chemicals and other chemicals that will prevent us from the, um, the various diseases. That our food environment will will change. We hope to come up with interventions and ways and means in which we can influence people's food environments towards a healthy uh, lifestyles and healthy uh, patterns. But I think 
what is important if you go back to the food that is available, the food that is produced. So as we work with the agriculturalists and other sectors, we hope that the right amount and the right quality and the right composition of food will be produced um, so that it can be um, uh, the right food. And, and obviously influencing what kind of guidelines are available for people and of course other, uh, whenever we need and so forth we must expand through doing things like these uh, gentlemen are doing.